Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Red Dead Redemption 2. And it is a lovely evening here at Ridgewood Farms, guys. In much happier times compared to the first Red Dead game. But we are continuing our exploration here of New Austin, and it looks like we actually made a bit of a U. We started from Armadillo and headed all the way around here to Tumbleweed and to Ridgewood. So this entire middle area is unexplored. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and ride south and explore this area here near Benedict Point and just work our way up here. Into, I think there's pretty much nothing but desert up here, but still, that gives us... And, oh, there's all this area, too. Hmm. Well, we'll just kind of play it by ear. And also, um, the good Sheriff Freeman, I think, may have another bounty for us in Tumbleweed, but he said to wait a few days. So what better way to pass the time than by doing some nice, wholesome exploring where nothing bad could possibly happen. Ain't that right, Rachel? It's not like we're having buildings okay, sudden, suddenly Let's explode go. next to us or anything. So, let's see. Um, Let us go ahead and travel to Benedict Point first. We're actually near the area where we discovered Jenny in the first game. And I'm kind of worried about going into Ridgewood. Because I don't want to get attacked from behind by any deceitful goats like we did in Rathskeller. <laughs> oh, morning's starting to break. Fine morning, partner. You, mister! <laughs> That's weird, John. John's like, no, you. Look how gorgeous the terrain is. Good God, this game. The one thing that I th I would love to have where I live is elevation points like this, like the Cap Rock that you see here, which is very similar near Roswell, uh, New Mexico, that I lived about an hour and a half from. But most of my stuff, I, we were we lived up on the top of that, and it was just nothing but flat. And then it would go into hill country, and then the mountains itself. So we were we were far away, West Texas, not exactly known for its elevation. Or eastern New Mexico, for that matter. Morning. Morning! Can we look at that sunrise? Ah, oh, yeah. Good stuff, that. Okay, let's keep an eye out for buildings and corpses. And we got Benedict Pass here. Hmm. I guess we could go ahead and travel along the railroad here. Let's see where exactly we can go. So we'll head we'll head about here, I'm thinking. And then we'll cut a left, head over into this area, get this all explored, see if there's any buildings or such and we should be good to just kind of loop around and then head over to Mercer Station and check out the desert here now this desert is um, where some folk potentially are at least they were in the first game that have very particular appetites so I'm wondering if we're going to run into anything like that kind of like the night folk in the swamps also uh, you guys let me know that I actually need to travel back to Lemoyne because the cause of the of the plague, the cholera in Armadillo has something to do with that and something else that we had apparently been looking at before. So I'm very curious to see what that's all about. Is there a building? No, it's not. Okay. It's so, like, is there a building just kind of hidden up there on that bluff? Huh. So we're going to keep on here. And we'll turn right there to the sun. Gorgeous, though. I'd hate to be riding into it. And we got a campfire. I see now, considering how open... Uh, this area is that a lot of this was probably designed for Red Dead Online. Which I can understand. 
gives people a place to kind of ride around openly without running into a whole lot of stuff like you would back in the Red Dead 2 game area. I, though I kind of wonder, because we didn't actually ride down here with Arthur, if we could have done all of this with Arthur. That would have been fairly interesting. See Arthur riding through this area, as opposed to John. Okay, well, I don't think there's anything over there near Plainview worth looking at, so let's take this little loop and then we'll head up north. And if I miss anything important, guys, as usual, just let me know. Oops, hello there, big bird. Big evil bird. Boating. That at, that actually would have made an awesome shot in a western. Just riding and seeing the sun behind a buzzard with its wings out. That would have been all kinds of nasty and foreboding. But we do have a camp up here. Saddle. See what's going on over here. Del Lobos, maybe? Oh, an autosave. That's not a good sign. I don't need your type in my damn pitch. Oh. Well, far be it for me to, uh... Repentance. To be up in your pitch, sir. Apologies. I was just you know looking, do, girl. looking for things. He does have a nice area for a camp, though. Beautiful views. Whoa, easy there, Rachel. What's? Oh, he got stuck in some rocks. At least there wasn't a rattler or anything nearby. Oh Lord, I heard it. I heard it, game. heard that rattler and actually we probably need to go ahead and get our repeater out just in case we run into any more wildcats and now I'm gonna have that stupid song no it wasn't stupid it's actually an awesome song from the uh, cartoon stuck in my head you know what let's go ahead and turn right we'll head by Fort Mercer and then get to Mercer Station, and then ride straight north. And then if we explore everything here, we could actually travel to Lake Don Julio. And if we have everything explored, guys, I think... we can pretty much, after we're done exploring, and head up into... or head back to Tumbleweed to do that last bounty, we can actually return to Blackwater, do that bounty, and get back to the main quest line. Which I'm excited and sad about, because this has been just an awesome little bit of nostalgia. Pretty, pretty nostalgia. I mean, just look at the clouds and the, uh, the trees, the tall trees over there. Like, how, how sick is that? That thunderhead? Which means that it looks like a storms are coming. So, I don't know if I told this story during um, during the series, but oh, he's he'd kill me. No, he wouldn't kill me. He he he'd understand. We told the story enough. But I know you guys got a kick out of the sudden bear attack. <laughs> um way back when we were exploring the area near the ranch John was working at. Well, to tell you guys the truth, that actually is very funny to me because my brother <laughs> was actually attacked by a bear when he was younger. We used to take camping trips to northern Arizona back in the day, like back when I was a wee one. And um, we'd go camping with family, and they were the kind of family that would literally just, that's all they did was camp. I think they kind of lived out there in the mountains and campers and such. 
And um, my we had we had an old camper, and that's actually the earliest memory I have of my entire life. We were camping in Monahans, Texas, which um, has sand dunes. And we were camping over there, and I remember walking the dunes with my brother. My brother had a cardboard box with a rope um, over my head, and he was leading me through the desert because it was kind of a sandstorm. What is that? That is very blue. But I remember sitting in that camper and watching Masters of the Universe when it was on uh, broadcast TV on CBS. Oh my god. Well, this looks familiar. Charles Kinnear. Oh, what an awesome reference to Red Dead 1. Found, found a flying machine. Needless to say, it had crashed. Where did they... I guess it jumped off of... That area. That was way too low. <laughs> I love that Charles Kinnear written right on the wing. Good stuff. Uh, but sitting there with my brother, um, watching Masters of the Universe when it first came on TV, on CBS, was like one of my earliest memories. And... Um, or at least one of my earliest memories camping. And there is something up here. Oh, oh, this is our, um, this is that area that I was talking about, the, what we have to buy when we got the mission from the mysterious stranger, or the strange man. But anyway, my brother, who's nine years older than me, decided that he wanted to camp in an actual tent. So he camped in the tent while the camper and everyone had their campers and tents and stuff. But I think at the time he was the only person who had a tent. All the other folks were older, so it was all campers for them. And then one day he or one night he is asleep, hey, hey, easy. and he wakes up to the sound of something like I'm gonna the mic hears. at the camping, at the at the uh, tent door. And he thinks it's my dad, like, trying to mess with him. And all of us, he's, he looks and he hears this rip sound as the, the, the camp, or the tents is quietly, slowly slashed open. And then a, I think it's a, it was a brown bear? I'm afraid it was a brown bear or black bear, but a bear snout sticks its nose in. And my brother screams like, you know, he's about to get eaten, which was quite possible. And the bear like gets scared, I think, and knocks over. He had a, a, a like a, a clothes hanger kind of thing or a it was a metal there's a metal rack for him to hang clothes on and it fell on him and he thought that the bear was on top of him and he starts swinging and my dad hears the caterwauling and he goes out there and my dad was a cop so he goes out in his underwear with a gun and it was I slept through the entire thing I don't even remember any of it happening but I was told all about it in the morning and um, the next day I don't know who lives here but I am stealing all of their stuff the next night, um, they can't find any sign of the bear. Really. Or they can see that the bear like went off into another area, I think was what happened. And they go ahead and we stay there. The next night, we hear some more ruckus, or at least my dad does. And in the morning, my brother, my brother obviously after that attack decided to sleep in the camper. The next morning after that... The tent was completely destroyed and shredded. So the bear came back, realizing that he didn't get the food in the wrapper. <laughs> so um, my brother dodged a bullet there and a very large bear. And apparently they went and, because the bear was going in and like attacking. They eventually had I think they went they went and shot it that day. They were able to track it down. But because um, apparently it, the bear was aggressive or some uh, like obviously. But I think that wasn't the first time the bear had come around. So anytime you bring up like a bear attack, like the first thing that popped in my mind was like, oh, my brother. You 
took a wrong turn. Yeah, I hear that a lot. Let's give this cover a some direction. Hey, you don't know Mama Marston. How dare you? Well, we see a building and get attacked by Del Lobos. That's kind of telling. Let's go ahead and grab their loot. Rachel agrees. If you don't run into any rattlers, we'll, sh we'll be in good shape. Looks like a trailer park over there, but that is... Looks to be an adobe structure of some sort. Maybe another Del Lobo camp. We need to remember we're going to be backtracking to some of these areas because uh, Freeman will need us to go do another bounty. Rachel's like, I'm grazing. Just Good leave girl. me alone. Let's go. Twin rocks. Ah, yes, tri twin rocks. Well, one of the things I... Oh, we need to go check the uh, drawers in the sheriff's office in Armadillo as well. Well, well. Oh, speaking of wells, we have to go to that abandoned uh, ranch too. Crap, got a lot of backtracking to do here. I don't remember this area from Red Dead 1. Let's see how... Is this just a ranch? Please tell me it's just a ranch. Sir! How's it going? Howdy, friend. Are you okay with us being here? Oh. It ain't a big deal. Okay, never mind. Oh, he's got that Sam Elliott mustache, too. I will go ahead and leave now. Or I won't. Yeah, this is just a weird little house out here in the middle of an area that you normally. Better get cut and dirt. Okay, cut and dirt, sir. You damn right. <laughs> there. Let's go, girl. Why are you still talking? That might be an area that gets uh, destroyed by Del Lobos or whatever other gang comes running around later. Also could be the start of the cannibals, to tell you the God's honest, and it looks like there's another building. Oh no, that's a train. <laughs> Maybe we can go catch the train. And Armadillo is still on fire. See, I don't want to kill anyone. That's the problem with, uh... Marston. I think right now he's trying to stay on the straight and narrow. And I wonder if we can go through the entire, like, tall trees area. Good God. I do kind of want to get the show on the road, though. This was my primary... It's like, the tall trees area is kind of meh. This is what I wanted to look at. This is what I wanted to have fun doing. Choo choo. And one thing we have to do over here, apparently, is hogtie Herbert Moon, which I'm completely alright with. 
Oh, I guess they're st it's not on fire necessarily. They're just still burning bodies. Search drawer. His accoutrements were in here, he said. Eh, nothing there. Search drawer. Guess we're just gonna look for more more of everything. You got a lot of garbage in here. And he had some premium cigarettes, which I guess smoking would be a Stay tool away. of the profession. The cholera is still raging. How's it going there, big man? Morning to you. Hey, partner, I'd stay out of town if you can. Place is full of cholera. So many dead, they can't even bury him properly. Uh, thank you. Keep safe. If you excuse me, I've got to go rob a store. I don't want to kill. I have no qualms robbing. Oh, there's something. What are you doing? Oh, oh, hey, Mister. I'd keep my distance out. Oh, cholera. Will do. Will do. Do 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 do, Mr. Moon. Welcome back. It's all here waiting for. Yeah. You know what? Actually. You'll regret not. Do 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 do. Well, I ain't off to be burned at Coots. That's for sure. I'd like to see the person I'm dealing with. So take the mask off, please. Uh huh. Okay, friend. Open the register right now. You don't have to do this. What can I do to make you happy? Fine. Do all you want. I'll even open it for you. Uh huh. You tell everybody you're spending Herbert Moon's money. Herbert Moon. I've got the money in there. Oh yeah. This is your problem. Just quit whining. What the hell? Now you have something information for me apparently. There's no need to rope me like some damn peasant. Unnatural bastard. How dare you? Yeah, we'll at least loot him. <laughs> you don't got any objections. What's in here? Ooh. Letter to Herbert from Heretta? Papa, I know you do not like Isaac and cannot bear that I have sullied your bloodline, as you put it, but I beg you to not cut me off as a daughter. I love and respect you, but I also love my husband, even though you consider the cause of blood and the selling of groceries to be the purest and best of callings. I feel called to a different path. Isaac and I are dedicating ourselves to helping the poor. I am sure your God will hate me for marrying a Jew, but Isaac is a good man, whatever you may think. Oh, Papa, I pray for you, to the God you believe must hate me, and that he in his infinite wisdom can make you see that I am not the sinner you believe me to be. Either way, I love you and hope you will forgive me for this unpardonable sin, and come and see your grandchild when it arrives. Your daughter, Herberta Solomons. Hmm. Anything else for us? Herbert? Okay, well, apparently not. Still, I'm completely okay with this. I'll tell you what, Herbert. Nah. We'll leave it alone. I already have directions to a cabin, so... Which we will go look at sometime down the road. 
So zooming out, we got tr Twin Rocks settled. Um, I think the only thing left to do is maybe over here near Lake Don Julio because I... S oh yeah, the... Uh, I think it's two crows. Right? Yeah, I think it's two crows that we have to go to. Hopefully someone will find you, Herbert. And I think we'll keep the mask on, <laughs> just in case. Well, with the cholera outbreak, you know that Seth had some... had a lot to do between this and Red Dead 1. I wonder if we... that'd be great if we ran into him. Pretty crazy. Yeah, there... now we're looking for a well. Not the kind that, like, baby Jessica dropped into. I know I'm really dating myself with that reference, but... I live, like, 20 miles from the town where that happened, so... Everyone knows that story. Okay, is there... Is there a well here? It may mean that other area down across there. Water well, water well. Huh. Well, we guess we can check the toilet. You never know. Negative. Don't know until you try. Um, oh, there it is. Slow now. Think of that. Uh, oh, there is some. That's Conan style right there. That was a lady too. Donkey lady. Donkey lady. Oh, God. What was this poor thing? Who would do such a thing to any creature? Good God almighty. Okay, was there something else? Over here that we needed to see other than Donkey Lady? Can we get into first person view here? I'm trying to rem remember how to do that. There we go. Please don't come to life. Yeah, there's no human skull in there. Ew. Another one of those strange things that this game will never explain. Hell's bells. Yeah. That poor creature must have lived a hellish existence. Okie dokie. You got this, girl. Well, that'll give me nightmares. Come on, Rachel. Let's head. Oh, it's even ridden down like that. Um, let us take the road less traveled here. I think we're going a way that I haven't gone before. The lake should be... Up here on the, past this bluff. I'm just looking for corpses and... Like buildings, to tell you the gods honest. Oh, oh, actually, no, the lake isn't on that bluff. It's on the other side. Whoops. We shall head east. Yeah, let's put up the put on the brakes here because this is Lake Don Julio. Oh Lord, the cabin is still here. Well, I know where we're going. Gonna go 
pay a visit. Oh, easy. Easy, now. easy there, Rachel. You can do this. I got faith in you. Good girl. So. I wonder what kind of fish we could get here at the lake. Giant carp. As far as the eye can see. Yeah, we've got a horn. we got some fresh water. Someone has definitely lived here. Hello? It really bugs me that all of these places are not... No one's here. It's like... A ghost town, except for the settlements. Which is so different compared to, uh... The other areas that Arthur frequented. True Tales of Frank Heck, number 102. It's a penny dreadful. Hell, heck, and thunder on Rawhide Road. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. Huh. Someone doing a little bit of candlelight reading. Anything in the fireplace that we should be aware of? Nope. This is where a certain character decides to uh, take their retirement. Well, actually, there's a shootout here beforehand, but then afterward, I guess in the vacancy, someone decides to make it their retirement home. Lake Don Julio House. Mm-hmm. Now, remember, we can't actually go down into Mexico, so... I think that is... I think that's pretty much it over here. Except for this... Oh! Hello, building. I see you. So, I'll take... Uh, considering the time that we have left in the episode, we are going to go ahead and ride and figure out what this place is. And then, unless anyone has any objections, we will go ahead and travel up back to Tumbleweed, or travel west back to Tumbleweed, do that bounty, and then head back to... We'll, what we'll do... Alright, I've got it I've got it in my brain pan, what we're going to do. We're going to head to Tumbleweed. We're going to get that, that bounty taken care of. Then we're going to head to Lemoyne and search that cabin that you guys told me about in the comments. We'll head to Blackwater, take care of that bounty, and then we'll go back talking to Uncle and get the main storyline going again. I think we've had a very nice time aside. I think it would be amazing. You know what get actually would get me playing Red Dead Online? If you had areas that you could actually build a house and do stuff. I know that's not exactly the rock star formula. You can buy houses and such, but I'd love to be able to try and farm the land or you just do different stuff. Raise cattle. Live that western life. Also, I apologize for not going and looking for any of the rare horses you guys have told me about. It's just I get really attached to the animals that you start out with in games. Like Rosalina, rest in peace. Rachel here, Pebbles and Kingdom Come Deliverance. Everyone's like, oh, why do you have that horse? That horse is like one of the weakest horses ever. And I'm like, it's true, but it's my horse. And we just got a barn here in the middle of nowhere. That is boarded up. That's suspect. Did it get hit with the cholera too? I'd imagine if you could hear like zombies inside. Kind of a Easter egg to undead nightmare. I guess we can go ahead and take the mask off now. Did that say anything here on the map what this is? Oh, there's an area down south too.
Come on, Rachel. Sun, the sun is starting to set. We have had a long day. Or is this Irish's little shack? Because he had a little base here. Where we headed to Mexico in the first place. Oh, well. No, but... We got some goats and rams. I'm not exactly pleased about that. Empty bottles. Looks like someone was having a good time. Hmm. Probably a hangout spot for the local drunks. Yep, yeah, right here on the lake. Was it Grum Hollow? Hmm. And if we head this way, it's going to take us all the way up to McFarland's ranch, and then we can take the uh, stage right back to Tumbleweed. I'm wondering if I'm missing anything by not coming to these places at night. Like there's some sort of gathering. I don't know. But also, like I said, a lot of these areas may be reserved for Red Dead Online, so those could be important if you're playing the online game, for all I know. I get a lot of notices from Rockstar saying, hey, do you want to play Red Dead Online? And I kind of do. But at the same time, oh god, there's the fort! I hate the fact that we can't go to Mexico now. And thank you in the comments for letting me know. That we risk the the uh, we risk falling into the abyss. I appreciate the heads up there, Chuckles. Now I'm really paying paying attention to see if that uh, little camp with the boat is over here. I think it's maybe over in Mexico though. Actually, it was. Now that I remember it. Because it's kind of technically your first base of operations. And I know, Rosalina, you're going to get yourself a good brushing down and some food. That road leads somewhere. I'm going to regret this. Howdy. I'm wondering if there's any Easter eggs that have, have not been discovered yet in this game. Because you're sitting there like, there's what this world is way too big. That there's something out there in the desert or in the trees or something that has just not been seen. And that's a waterfall down that way. head around here to the dead end. See what's what. Oh, easy there. Easy, easy. Oh, Lord, Rachel. That was a mighty jump. Oh, there it is. I'll be. This is where we headed to Mexico. It'd be great if Irish were here and he was just passed out. Don't think we can go in here, though. Oh! Alright. Interesting. Lots of premium cigarettes and such. Fishing trap. Plenty of places to fish. Yeah, because we have that super long raft ride. I remember that now. Were you having to shoot everything on the way to Mexico? And then that just loops around towards Stillwater Creek. I don't think there's any buildings or anything, though there is a 
an area on the map to explore. And you know what, we'll just make this a little bit of a long episode, just a tad bit. Nothing out of the way. Just enough we can explore this waterfall and then head over to the McFarland Ranch. Because nighttime is coming. And being on a mountain trail is not particularly advisable. It is, however, gorgeous. That is for sure. Antica Falls. All right. Now show me the fastest way to the McFarland Ranch game. And light on the Del Lobo attacks, if at all possible. Also notice that the random encounters here are few and far between. But I guess that does kind of make sense because the in that western area, most of the population is focused on tumbleweed and armadillo. It's not spread out to kind of represent the western expansion from Red Dead 1. Yeah, that actually does make a bit of sense. But hopefully there's a place where we can rest and get some food, at least hitch Rachel up and make camp. McFarlands don't know us yet. And is that a building? No, uh, never mind. That's just a that's just a bridge. Oh, partner! I'm trying to say hello, but John apparently just kind of like hi. Or, hey, you, person. It's been a long day on the trail. But no wild animal attacks, except for Lobos. So I guess we should be happy. And let's not park in front of McFarland's house. Let's, uh... I'm looking for Gavin. Oh God. He's my best friend. He left me. I lost him. I mean, I lost him. Poor guy. Someone must have seen an Englishman. Really funny he is. <laughs> okay. Let up. It looks like this is the only place to hitch the horse. Okay, Rachel. Let's go ahead and get you settled. Get those cores back up. I'm looking for my friend. Gavin. And feed, feed, feed. Gavin. There's a girl. And you know what? We're just gonna keep on feeding you until all your cores are up, Max. All the burdock root. I don't know if we can overfeed you, but there we are. Good girl, Rachel. You have done the work today. Lady. Okay. Now I'll probably see if I can just set up camp right here. I, I'm sure the people over at the ranch wouldn't mind. Oh. How about here? Well, fine. This is not the wilderness, then. I guess on the other side of the tracks. <laughs> Please don't get hit by a train, John. Appreciate it. Ah, well, I will find a place. So we will end it here, guys. And when we get back, we will be in Tumbleweed and doing some more bounty hunting. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.